Christopher Plummer, da 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 Now see, it's in my head. I gave him a good plug, didn't I? He Sound certainly did. We, 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 let's, bring, let's bring him out here. He's a marvelous actor. Uh, if he were lousy, I probably wouldn't say that he was. I'd probably say he's a marvelous actor because I'm on television, but he is a marvelous actor. And he's played almost all of the great classical parts. And uh, he's been acclaimed in films and television and everywhere. We welcome, please, and in The Sound of Music, by the way. We welcome, please, Mr. Christopher Plummer. Yeah. I knew I was the sweet on the show, but uh, I didn't know it was going to be so saccharine. <laughs> well, <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. I expected at least also Sprach Zarathustra. To, yes, for uh, a classical uh, actor to play and, uh, from the sound of music. That's strange, uh, strange entrance music. I just was thinking of a, a cue, like Lynn and I were when we were sitting off stage to come on with. You cued me on beautifully, darling. I'll kill you later. But I was thinking at the time, uh, you said some shows go on... Uh, wings of cast iron, and then you were talking yeah. about fags. Well, I'm the cast iron fag, and here I am. Well, that's big of you to admit <laughs> that, I <laughs> think. <laughs> so, you, you, you. Yes. Very good. Well, now we get to the real heavy stuff. It means he's a heavy cigarette, that's is what right. he's talking that's about. Right. <laughs> That'll, I hope, will get a lot there, somewhere else. There'll be talk about that for days now <laughs> yes. in, the, in the States. Yes. We yeah, you're a, settled here in London now. Are, are you for uh, good? Uh, not after tonight. <laughs> I'm not settled at all here. <laughs> I'm. Uh, Yes, I am. I love. I adore London. Let me ask you this now, frankly, because you don't. You you, you can say. Did did it bug you being in the sound of music? Not Was at that all. Not your favorite job. Not at all. No. Um, somebody made a remark once, which I think is absolutely lovely, and I'm always misquoted on it. And it wasn't me. It was somebody else. And yeah. uh, I was asked, "What was it like being in the sound of music?" Or what was it like seeing the sound of music, which is more accurate? And this person said, "Well, it was like being beaten to death by a Hallmark card." <laughs> and, uh, it had a sort of sweetness about it. It wasn't uh -huh. vicious or malicious, but it was yeah. kind of true. No, I think the film... Made people uh, feel good. <laughs> I think the film did... Uh, I can't possibly knock it because so many people enjoyed it. Yeah. And it would be cruel to say that. It was made beautifully. I think we worked so hard to make it not saccharine and properly sentimental. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful to be in a great big Hollywood musical. I mean, one's always wanted to be. I, a great big vulgar, lavish, probably one of the last we'll ever see, you know, sort of kind of nostalgic. You're crying a bit, Trevor, thank you. Do you always reduce Trevor to tears like that? <laughs> yes. We have, we have, oh, we're back on, on television. We're just talking about being on television, how it's odd for some actors. If you had to dump one medium, uh, if you could say, <laughs> I, I, I'm never going to, you're never going to work again, Mr. Plummer or Mr. Howard or Ms. Redgrave or Mr. Campbell, in one medium, which one would you? cross out. The arts, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the arts, I see. Well, what, yes, yes, yeah, I think so. I, I, I have to play safe here, because if I cut myself out of one, I'll have cut myself out of all three. And these days, it's very difficult enough to get into one. So I think I'd... Um, Isn't there I'd one that's chicken about that a little harder for you? I think they're all beautiful. Oh, yes. Okay. But, but, but then after you said that, and you had to eliminate one, which one would it be? <laughs> Well, I think maybe tape television. I love the uh, terrible danger we used to have in live television in New York. And right now, for example, the, the sort of feeling that you're going to go on saying somebody else's words and not your own, yeah. or your own and not somebody else's, as so often happened. Yeah. But uh, I remember those <laughs> terrible days. Do you remember an old actor called Ian Keith, who, who was one of the finest American actors? I do. Do you remember? Yeah. I and, and there was a, his there was a live television show in New York called Broadway TV Theater, which was like a repertory company. You did the play in front of the cameras every night for a whole week, like a rep. It's extraordinary, but it was very successful. And at the end, all the stars came out and helped with the commercial. And they were selling Ford or something, or some car like that. And uh, Ian Keith one night was the butler, and he necessarily didn't come on again, and he went out and got plotsed. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the show, he came back quite rightly. He, why should he take a curtain call? He's only playing the butler, but because he was such a fine actor, they were, came on and uh, he said, well, Mr. Mr. Keith, what do you think of this wonderful new Ford we have here this year? And he said, I think it's a piece of crap. <laughs> he hit it and he said, I've got an MG. Now let me tell you about this MG. 
He had a marvellously impressive voice. He, he was rather like John Barrymore probably used to be. In fact, they, mm. they were at the same time. And he went on and on about the MG. We couldn't get him off. And, and this was and, going right out over the air. When Equity and... called mm. and said, well, what's happened? They're all complaining that he, he must never work again. And we all went down and said, Mr. Keith um, was tired. I mean, we all lied like mad. He was such mm. a wonderful man. Yes. I wish there were more of those sort of huge personalities around where there is this one standing right there, sitting right there. The <clears throat> You're a big personality today, in that sense. In You're the trying sense to of... get away from your job, put it back. <laughs> <in your hand. laughs> you you are. The, the You're last time Trevor was on he my show in New York, he broke up the place by, you said the word jazz, and there was a riot in the audience. Some people had come to demonstrate about black jazz on television, and he triggered the, the uh, demonstration not knowing he was doing it, and it was an interesting thing. Thank you for thing. saying that, because no one believed it, you know. They That's thought right. that I did. They thought it was rigged. Yes. And then... Have you ever heard of an old actor called A.E. Matthews, oh. now passed to his rest? Yeah. I once went to call on Matthew because he was having some trouble about the bushy oh, county yes. council that erected a lamp, lamp post outside his house. Right. They put and a lamp post outside his house and he didn't And want. dug it up, and I went to call on him to interview him. And when I arrived at the garden gate at the same time, the young man arrived with a load of manure. And we walked up the path together and knocked on the door. And it was opened by me. Matty. Matty. And the young man said, would you like a load of manure, Mr. Matthews? He said, I am a load of manure. I'm sorry, you're still around. Do you, Trevor, can you answer that question, though, about media? If you have a choice of working in television the rest of your life, or movies the rest of your life, or theater the rest of your life, if you had to pick one, let's sharpen the question, would it be hard for you to pick one? <clears throat> yes, it would, really. I'm not trying to evade it. You see, mm -hmm. I think the time's kind of my life when, when one should declare one's innings closed so that one isn't bothered about any more work. And uh, the first one that comes along that you want to do, you, you accept. But you tell the world that you really have retired, you see. Announce it. And then uh, whichever one comes along, then, then that's the one you do use, you see. No, I think, that, that so, I think there's so many people in our profession today, and everyone knows this, I'm sure, that it's... Um, I feel I, I, will, I wouldn't advise any young people to go into it because... Uh, except that they've taken over, actually, haven't they, Chris? I mean, it's, it's we that can't get any work. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's us. It's we that can't get any work, you see. I, I think, think, we, come I think we should anyway. declare our innings closed. Oh, that's a cricket term, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we should retire until somebody asks us to go... To well, no, I think I, I might retire till I'm Spencer Tracy sort of age and then try mm. and be as good as him. Then maybe, maybe we can come, come back then, that sort of thing. But I think uh, it's yeah. accent on youth. I have a terrible feeling. Uh, I'm not going to ever talk to you again, for a start. <laughs> and I, I don't see why it shouldn't be. You're not such an antique. <laughs> Trouble I've taken with everything to come on the show. Wait till it all comes off. And it's, it's horrid and, and sinister and awful. Really? Oh. But, I mean, you still get around. You're spry for your age. You're spry for your age. <laughs> I, I don't... It's waiting in that old vanguard out there that did it. No, it's, it's living. He's living in London, I think, that's changed me. New York, I found, um, was, was getting a bit on top of me. When Aging you fast. It's very fast. Yeah. I loved it, but I, I'm afraid it beat me. I was, uh, it was leading me on, and I decided I'd move. Mm. I came here, and uh, I'm still living it up, but uh, not, not quite with such sort of terror and pace as one has to in that city, I find now. Do you find that? Uh, yeah, but uh, it is fashionable for people to say they've come to London to get away from all of that. And there well, are, it is a lot easier. That was in 1961. <laughs> but but the, it's quite a long time ago. 61. To be yeah. fashionable. Well, the thing now they say is everything is better in London, and it isn't actually not everything. The air here is as foul as ours. I drove the other day, and I swear I was I felt I was, had a, the exhaust pipe of a bus over my head. It was just yeah. unbelievable. Yes, but then surely I've I've heard everyone's telling me that you were driving on the wrong side of the road. You had an accident. <laughs> you did have an accident. I did have an accident. In fact, several of your team up. here have. So perhaps you shouldn't have come. You shouldn't have come. <laughs> 
you would have saved us a lot of trouble, wouldn't you? Well, at least he's with us. Don't cry in a minute. To be asked to leave England by my one of my well, one Don't of my go. favorite actors is more than I can take. You no, want I was thinking purely of your safety. Oh, my safety, yes, but the safety of other drivers. Uh, yeah, I had got into one of those situations that you you know will happen sometime in your life, where although your every instinct is to slam on the brake and go and stop, you know that you're going to have to hit the accelerator and aim for that one hole that race drivers talk about and hope you get through it. And uh, as you can tell, I did, or you would all feel silly talking to an empty, swiveling chair here uh, at this point. But it was quite frightening, I must say. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they're back. Mr. Plummer, you're, you're involved in a new, th new kind of theater. Actually, you're involved in an old kind of theater. And I'd be interested in knowing why an old kind of theater is better than the new kind of theater that we're all used to seeing, where you see a stage like this. And <laughs> is there a reason why you'd go back to the kind of Shakespearean yes. theater? That well, a friend of mine, um, a fellow called George Marcel, found, found an old church in Islington, uh, sort of a copy of Salonic in the 5th century. It was 100 years old, and it was going to be demolished. But its dimensions were the exact dimensions of the Globe Playhouse inside. Yeah. And uh, he, he got the idea that what we miss in this country, and indeed everywhere, is a company, professional, who plays all the year round the plays of the Elizabethan dramatists. Um, yeah. Everyone, including Shakespeare, yeah. and uh, for students and, uh, and uh, everything alike. And so we've saved the church from, uh, from demolition, and we've got Her Majesty's seal of approval and the church commissioners, which took two, two, two or three years. But all we need is the loot. Uh -huh. And uh, that's a, a little subject that I'm going to bring up when I'm over in America and Canada. And I hope that's that people sweet. can be interested, because the potential is extraordinary. We, we've also had great interest from, from universities in America. And American Heritage, for example, who are always marvelous about things like that, have, have been terrifically helpful. And um, we hope that this will open in two or three years, if we can raise the money to do so. And the company will be us, people who have all been trained in the classics, who are pros. Yeah. And there will be a second company who will be uh, young people who will perhaps yeah. play during the day. This is very ambitious and a, and a dream, but I hope it, and it must come true. Even if it doesn't come true in the next 10 years, it must come true. That, because the vitality of an Elizabethan playhouse is what is missing, I think, from the classical theater today. Does that have to do with the stage jetting out into the audience largely? Yes, it? it's the same dimensions as the old yeah. Globe Playhouse, and you had it, it's almost uh, circular. Yeah. So, but the vitality and the energy of those people mm -hmm. that brought uh, alive to the theater, that, uh, the performances in big, sort of huge style, is missing today. We have Freudian concepts, we have all sorts of sort of directors who get hang-ups about doing Shakespeare and plastic Macintoshes and things like that. Yes. Well, that, that's, all, that's all very fine. There's room for that, but there's also room for the old pure purity and, and, and the big stuff again that we miss. And, and, and you'll do it if you can get the bread up. But does yeah. that mean something awful Thank you over for, here, for too? Thank you for letting me say that on your show. Yeah. 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 That's Gee. very sweet of you. That's my. It's a contribution, no. perhaps, from you. Yeah, <laughs> no. I have, begin with the first hundred. I never carry money on the air. You know that. But I would be glad to donate to that. Trevor, you never play Shakespeare, do you? Well, we want to ask him done. to do so. He's been a great Shakespeare. I'd love to see you do it. You have done. I, I was brought up in it. I think that Shakespeare is a very great necessity for actors to start in. I think it's truly very difficult for people in middle age to do it for the first time because they haven't got the, uh, the training of it. We all as kids started in Shakespeare. May I sir, interrupt you and tell Dick that everybody in our profession knows that Trevor Howard was the best Petruchio that this country, I think, has probably ever seen. We all know that. That's an act of... Give us a line up. Trevor takes praise, so... <laughs> what are you doing later tonight? <laughs>